I always want to. I always just want to clap on that beat every single time when we're in the mm. listening to the intro song. It's the Exit Fifty Two podcast presented by Jimmy Seafood. Back on a Thursday night, January twenty fifth. It's me, Taylor Smythe. It's RDT. It's AFC Championship B, Mister Banks, on the show. We were doing our thing normally where we come on pre show and we just start potting without recording. And I said, all right, we're just hitting the record button and continuing our conversation. Mm. Let's just continue then. Uh, RDT was maligning the people that were saying this wasn't the biggest game in uh, – biggest home game in Baltimore I Ravens think, history, the AFC Championship game. I don't know who the hell these people are. You're talking about RDT. I it is think, clearly the biggest game for me. This is classic Eric, like, heard one or two idiots that just say something. No. And he's like, people are saying this. People are – and which he's – I guess he's technically not wrong, but, like, it's an insane take. It's insane. Someone, again, I don't know who, but there was a Twitter thread of people being like, is this the biggest Ravens game, home Ravens game in history? And it's just like, I wanted to smear everyone on the thread. Like, what do you, are? of course it is. Like, like I was saying, you can't, unless you, you're hosting a Super Bowl, which obviously the Ravens never will, unless they get the, I don't know if the Super Bowl is ever coming to Baltimore. But yes, this is the biggest game in, in franchise history. Like, home in, in home franchise history. Like, it was insane thing that people were even like trying to argue that i couldn't believe i think everyone's just going through the motions this week of like getting everything out of their system and someone's like i have to ask this of course just dumb question but it's literally the biggest game that can possibly be held at the stadium so like okay checks that box now let's compare it to all the other ones we've had in baltimore oh wait we haven't i mean i know the colts 51 53 years ago whatever but like whatever, you know, we separate that, whatever. Um, let's just try to compare it to comparable future potential additions. Like what, like what could possibly stack up to this AFC championship game against who is widely regarded the best quarterback in the game, who has the postseason mojo, who has hosted five straight in his own building. The AFC championship game has not been anywhere else, anywhere else in five years. And it's coming to our barn. And we have the opportunity to more or less take over the top of the mountain, take the crown. I know you got to go win the next one and you're still one behind Mahomes, but in theory, the chiefs until they get knocked off their block, they're still the big dogs on the block. Like that's the fact mm -hmm. of the matter. And there are other dogs on the block. We know Josh Allen's there, Joe Burrow's there. There's, you know, the AFC is going to be tough for a lot of years, but this is our opportunity to go and take that spot on top of the mountain. And then it's us that they come after at, from there forward the way I see it. And transition wise, like there are rumors of Travis Kelsey retiring. There's rumors of Andy Reid retiring. The chiefs are not trending upwards per se, outside of just having Patrick Mahomes for the long term. So this is where the momentum shifts. You go out and get this one. And it's, it's just all the runway in the world for Lamar Jackson to just be the guy of this generation. It's a yeah, massive it's, game. You can't yeah, get it's, bigger. It's the Lamar Jackson mm -hmm ascends into the next level he ascends into that mahomes level of stardom if he beats him in this situation now as you said i think to fully make that transition he's got to then go win the super bowl you can't you can't fully get there unless you have the ring um but he gives himself the puts himself in the position to do this for for you know five six seven more years to come you hope um in terms of the same kind of run that mahomes just went on yeah and then you you add in all the ancillary factors and you know the two quarterbacks is huge it's, you know, when people break down the matchup, it's two really good defenses that are playing very well. And then it's just, it really is, and we've talked about this a million times, tongue in cheek, but this enhanced star power that Travis Kelsey has through all this Taylor Swift stuff, um, and if she's in the stadium, that just ratchets it up even more. I mean, they just crested 50 million viewers for a divisional playoff game, about as good of a divisional playoff matchup as they could have asked for this Bills, Chiefs thing. The games are always good. Um, but the star power of all those guys has just been lifted um, from all the stuff that's gone on around the Chiefs. And then, you know, Josh Allen and, and Diggs and all those guys are huge stars as well. So it's it's a massive game. It's kind of amazing to me that it's the – maybe they just flip them year after year. It feels like it should be the main event. Like it should be the 630 game. It should not be the first game. It feels like throughout the week it's been the way bigger game than the mm -hmm. NFC Championship game in terms of the talk around it. Like every time I turn on, we have ESPN running in our office throughout the week. It pretty much always seems like it's a Chiefs-Ravens discussion um, and not a 49ers-Lions discussion. If that game was in Detroit, it would be 
and it was Detroit and Baltimore back to back, those would be, I think that would be amazing for the casual fan in terms of fans that have never experienced this before um, experiencing it. But yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it feels like it's the main event of the week. Um, well, my heart's just, racing right now. Just thinking about it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's too, it's too, it's too massive games. And, and the Ravens, I think the place is going to be and, – and kudos to the Ravens, and you knew they would do this. Uh, they've pulled out all the stops. They've left no sun unturned. The, the people that are going to be in the building are all the people you would expect to be in the building. Who's to say they won't bring out a surprise or two? I, I hope they do like wrestling style where you announce a bunch of things and then you roll some things out that you haven't put out there. That would be awesome. I don't know what that could possibly be. They played um, the Cal card last week already. Yeah, they've already yeah. played that card. They're bringing Phelps. They, they, Phelps and Cal, you've kind of like checked off the two non-Ravens boxes of guys you would bring back that are associated with Baltimore. I guess there's some other ones we could think of. Um, it's going to be a Royal Bowl where again, they're like, the, you're going to hear the music, and it's like, oh, shit, who's coming out now? And because the Royal Rumble the night before. The Royal Rumble's literally yeah. the night before. So it works, <laughs> yes. it works out great. It's going to be but David I, yeah, I know, but, showing up at, at midfield and, and and signing the papers. Barry yeah, Glazer. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, like, I the, the only thing I could think of. Yeah, I don't know what else they could do. Um, that place is going to be going to be totally electric. And I, I think the other thing that's like it's – it's the first one for this franchise and it's so big. Like what could possibly top it? Like once you get to the second and the third one and the fourth one, unless it's, you know, a chief's rematch next year after you win or in two years or there becomes that like four or five year rivalry, you're playing them a bunch of times in these type of games, not just in these regular season games that have been huge, but the playoff game ratchets, playoffs games ratcheted up way more. Like, I don't know what is going to end up being bigger this in this. And I think you can see it by the demand for tickets and how the dynamic pricing blasted the ticket prices up i mean it was is so much harder to get in this week than it was last week it was relatively easy to get in last week yeah mm-hmm. think about right, the, right just, the, the, the timeline too of this franchise very very successful franchise i think a lot of people were surprised to hear that it was the first one in baltimore um but think about the eras that we've gone through while we've been successful like the Patriots had a monopoly on on, on the AFC championship game for years and then the Steelers were able to mix a couple in there uh, Broncos had one or two, uh, chiefs and obviously ran off an absolute train at AFC championship games. They've been really hard to get. They've been really challenging to get. And there've been really, really good football teams for years in Baltimore that, um, you know, played very good football throughout the year, but they were just, they just maybe by part of playing in a tough division most years, just couldn't climb that AFC ladder high enough to get the seating to earn this game. And then we had the great opportunity, of course, four years ago where we thought it was a formality and it didn't happen. So, like, treasure this, understand how huge this is. Um, have freaking blast out there, man. I'm just, like, already already over, like, just thinking about walking laps around the bank and, and just the energy. And, oh, oh, like, every every night when I'm driving home and I'm, I'm getting off 95 and, and looking to my left and seeing the – the bank lit up. It just gets me so fired up, man. I I will say this too, from the outside looking in, it does seem like everyone like is treasuring this and really like taking it. To, and again, it kind of reminds yeah. me of the Orioles and that, and you know, like 2012 and some of the 2014 where it's like, listen, the Ravens fans have waited for, and it, again, it sounds weird to say because the Ravens have been good for a long time, but like Ravens fans have been waiting for this for, for 50 some years. Again, this has never yeah. happened here. So it's you weird. can tell that people are they're treating this like it's a it's a different animal because it is it really is so you can just tell by the way people are acting and going about this whole week that it's like this is not a normal playoff game it's an AFC championship game in Baltimore which is exactly what you play for and that's again like you said it's the the maximum thing that you can do at your stadium pretty much it's so it's weird because it's it's almost part of the fabric of the Ravens and their whole chip on the shoulder underdog thing where it's like we go on the road and we win games as road yeah. warriors. Like yeah, it, it's almost as if this game is our opportunity to make it, you know? Like to be a top tier, like like we made it, you know? Like that gets a little bit like existential where it's like, who are we if if we're starting to feel like we're top dogs and we like it's like the Steve Bashotti quote that they like to roll at the beginning of the fourth quarter all the time. Like, oh, that chip on the shoulder. I hope Baltimore never loses it, that whole thing. But I don't know. It's 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 a little bit of a weird place to be. But I think in having been 
just on the outside <laughs> trying to bang down that door and get this game for years. Now that it's here, like everybody's just so fired up and um, really embracing it the way they should. Yeah, I think that's well said. Like it became a badge of honor to have to like go on the road to win these games because we didn't get a ton of these games at home. So you just switch to the identity of being like, all right, it's gonna you're gonna do it the hard way each time. And it's an interesting change from I think the lead up to the Texans game that felt more guarded um in terms of like not trying to get hurt. And even, you know, we talked about it a little bit on the rambunctious incident analysis that occurred um on Saturday. Like the P at the half, people looked like totally shell shocked by the fact that it could be tied against this team, at least in the people that I was around. And then you just saw that release of emotion as you went through the second half and it became more like a party that mm. now the Ravens almost oh weirdly, God. even as the number one seed and the team that's playing at home, almost are the ones with less to lose than the chiefs in a way, because it just hasn't happened here. And Yes, Lamar Lamar maybe personally has some things to lose because it's a legacy game for him. But in terms of, I think, how fans feel, and maybe I'm just speaking for myself, I think people are going to go into this with a lot less nervousness. It's like, oh, my God, we finally now can just release all of this into this game as opposed to being concerned that the you know shades of 2019 were going to come back against a team that you were better than and you lost to. Um, so that, I think, is going to be a very fun part. It felt – a lot of like the second quarter of the game on and yes that will come back if the Ravens go down early or whatever it may be but it's the Chiefs so you're gonna like they're gonna score they're gonna do some things unless Mike McDonald's just an absolute magician which maybe he is um so I think that that it will just kind of feel more naturally energetic in there and after what was a really good crowd the other day don't get me wrong it was very loud and that the crowd impacted the game but this place is gonna be I mean and it, part of the reason was the cold but 10 minutes for that game. It wasn't exactly like buzzing in there. I mean, people were just kind of like trying to brave the cold, which ended up not being that bad if you're like in the stadium and around people. But um, yeah, I think this is going to be an atmosphere unlike an atmosphere, more like the 2019 divisional game in terms of the lead up and the buzz in the stadium, as you were sitting there for the intros, I think that it was on Saturday where I think it was a little more reserved because of the, weather and because of like the potential impending doom of not getting the game won in a game you're supposed to win. And the, you talked Taylor, you talked about it, like getting over the hump and all that. I, to me right away, I pictured the caps beating like last week was kind of like the caps beating the penguins in what the, I guess the, the, like, no, it was it not the conference final. It was to get to the Eastern conference Eastern, finals. Yeah. Where, yeah. where again, it was like, Oh shit. Finally, like they slayed what it, I think John Walton said, we, you know, they slayed the dragon, but it's like, no, 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 the job's not done. Like, you know, there's still more out there, but I, that feels like, well, that's what last week felt like. I think again, from the outside looking in, it, it, it would have helped if it was a better opponent, I think. But again, where it's like, all right, we Lamar, he, he got the win, you know, at home. And now again, now you're, you're still have a bigger, like you said, Taylor, like, I don't know, you still have a bigger opponent out there and there's still more to be done, but it's like, all right, you can kind of breathe now because you got that out of the way. The worriness is gone. Like, you don't have to worry about what if Lamar chokes in the playoffs again in the in his first game and blah, blah, blah. You don't have to have that conversation anymore. That's just what I thought of. I don't know if it's a great analogy or not or if it made any sense, but that's that's what came to I mind. I think it's a little different in the sense that the Ravens have obviously had the postseason success and have reached the top of the mountain. But if you related it to just this yeah. era – this short yeah, era yeah. with Lamar, I think it's a little more applicable, especially in the sense that like the Ravens also just haven't had many of those home divisional games with the chance to do the thing the next week at home. Like it just, mm. those have not existed that often. Um, yeah. So in that way, I think it's, it, it's somewhere in like, it just felt like the team played way freer at, in that sense. I agree with you and the way it will go. It's comparable to that caps example a little bit. And for the <laughs> fan base, maybe even more for the fan base and the actual people, on the field or the ice or whatever it may be. How has the Lamar halftime speech not leaked? They, they have to have that somewhere, right? We asked Kyle Van Noy about it, um, or actually one of the audience members did. And he said, like, it's probably been a little blown out of the water. Um, you know, he said what he said, and it was, in, you know, from a place of frustration and, like, demanding and what have you. But it wasn't like it was – some sort of like rousing movie like i i don't know like a lot a lot more has been made of it and it's not like he was the only person who said a word in there either 
Um, so it was it like a read. To me, it could have been a thing that was yeah. more about the overall tone of urgency rather than maybe what he actually said. It maybe was just like a flip from that specific guy to be like, oh man, like he's showing this type of fire here. But it wasn't like a soliloquy that he gave for two minutes. That feels like yeah, to me, like he walked in there was like, what are we doing? Like, but not something that maybe, I mean, they definitely had not cameras. Not win, a win one for the Gipper NFL Gipper always have cameras everywhere. So like, they definitely had it in there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that kind of lines up. Like maybe he was the one that led the charge on the overall tone and then multiple guys said something or whatever it may be. But maybe that was a shock to the system for the guys because maybe Lamar goes in there normally and doesn't say a ton. That would, that feels like my, that's like my take on it, but. We mm-hmm. shall see um, if it comes out. I'm sure. I mean, if they do, uh, if they win the Super Bowl and they do the whole thing about the team, uh, you would think that there will some be some halftime scenes shown from the Texans game at some point. Yeah, that feels yeah. like one that they hold in the chamber for a little. They're bit holding on eventually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, parade or something like when they're at the stadium and and they're like, like oh, by the way, y'all want to hear what he said or something? Yeah, they'll they'll do something with it. I agree. Um, let's break this game down briefly. We have the preview episode that. Uh, Spenny and Jacob put together. They also did the jumbo set earlier this week, so make sure to check those out um, for their preview of the game. But I think it would behoove of us um, to do a little talk about the game on the field this weekend. Couldn't be a bigger matchup if we talked about Ravens, Chiefs, Banks. When you think about maybe the thing you're going to watch for the most in this game, what kind of sticks out to you going into Sunday? It's probably the pressure on both sides in terms of the blitzing and how to deal with that. Um, I want to say the Ravens had the most sacks in the league. The Chiefs were second. Um, Mike McDonald's just been masterful at, at getting guys to have um, just free runs at the quarterback. To see both these quarterbacks not just deal with change over the protections, but also um, just doing what they do, you know, just avoiding the pressure and making plays from it. Um, I love our chances and our ability to, to cover better than their guys. Um, and also just, just generally speaking, like I look across the two rosters and the position groups and all those things. And I'm just not seeing many areas where the chiefs are better than ours. Like they, there are some areas where maybe they stack up, but man, like what, where, where is the edge for the chiefs here? And this is scary talk that I'm doing right now, but like mm-hmm. where, what did what do they have? It's the the Mahomes magic. That's really it. I mean, I yeah, to me, it. it's it's the like uh, he he's just he's Brady now. Like he could just walk into the game and it doesn't really matter who's around him and he can get it done. I think I think I Bill Simmons said that on a podcast I think this week where it was just like it's just now it doesn't really matter who's on the team. It's just like yeah. he, can, he can walk into the game and you're scared until the sixty minutes is up because. <laughs> He's on the field. I mean, like, he, it doesn't Brady matter. Like it's like Pacheco where he is, runs he hard, playing. but like, but like we hit hard too. Like I feel like he'll be neutralized more than you know almost anyone, any other team against us. Like I feel like him and PQ are going to have a couple of nice collisions that are going to be pretty spicy. So yeah, like can they get a good sixty minutes out of Travis Kelsey, who feels like a guy that you know, it's kind of in and around. He's like late stage. I think Simmons might've said this too. I'm just taking all Simmons points. <laughs> He's like late stage Gronk where he can just kind of be around for a little bit, but can't do it the whole game. He, um, yeah, he kind of moves like, like a robot. He moves like the Tin Man kind of where like, like Gronk like, did, where he's not, he's just big and boxy. I feel like now and he's so much where slower. I feel, where I feel like, like, where I feel like Kittle dipped a little bit and has now kind of like reascended. Kelsey feels like he dipped a little bit this year from like, the pure athleticism, but he's, but he's still, you know, he was a huge difference maker the other day. So he's, um, but he's just not showing up as much. I feel like drive to drive as like a mm-hmm. first down Kelsey, first down Kelsey, first down, like maybe that happens this yeah, weekend. Are, but, and with that, not there, can they get enough <laughs> out of the Valdez Scantlings and the she rices and all those different guys to get it done. And Mahomes makes those guys so good that maybe they do, but that, that to me, I feel like the Ravens are just going to do a better job than the a bills defense that was banged up at neutralizing the sort of, Oh, just okay. Weapons that Kansas city has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bra- yeah Brian, just- you, you talked about Pacheco and I was saying, I forget, I was saying to somebody the other day, but I was like, he's a good running. Like he's a very good running back. 
but he's not like a, they're going to ride him and they're going to win the game on his back. Like it's not a Derrick Henry in 20, in 2020. Like that's not going to happen. Like, it, it, yeah, it's he like just doesn't the echo is, is a factor. Sure. But, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you look at he our guys in the backfield, it's like we, we can mix our mix and match our way into wearing them down. And then they get a, a heavy, heavy dose of Gus Edwards in the fourth quarter. Like, you know, it's just, we have a very nice complimentary backfield. Um, and then there's, I mean, we saw him do it like Lamar last week, just used his feet a little bit more <laughs> than he has all season. And look what happened. It's just, it's the same pick your poison. It's always been with Lamar. And I feel like he's more willing to just, he's going to put his body on a line a time or two. It's going to happen on Sunday. It's, it's and almost, it's, it's almost like he lulled it. people. <laughs> it's like he lulled people to sleep in like the second half of the year where again, I feel like he wasn't running as much and people were like talking about it. And then last week it's like, Oh shit, that's right. Yeah. He, he can do that. Like he did it in the San Francisco game and they highlighted that in the, the Miami hard knocks where they were like, listen, if you tackle him, if you try and tackle him up high, he'll duck under you. And they showed the clip from the Jaguars and they were like, if you try and tackle him low, he'll, he'll jump out of it. And they were like, and then he's going to spin and he's going to put you on a poster and you're gonna you're gonna wish that like that clip wasn't out there and that's kind of what he got back to last week and yeah it's 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 gonna be interesting because casey is some big boys chris jones is is he's he's something so he and he was giving it to allen now it's just the fact that it's like can he catch lamar i mean that's that's the thing allen allen's a good runner obviously but him and him and lamar are completely different style athletes so it's 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 gonna be interesting and clearly, like, Munkin in the second half figured out how to deal with, I guess, the enhanced pressure that the Texans were throwing at them in the first half. So, like, what is Steve Spagnola's now counterpunch to what happened in that game? Like, what does he decide to do with Lamar in that way? Because, obviously, I think the book from some of the games that Lamar has looked the worst in was if you just send that pressure, he can't deal with it. And clearly, Todd Munkin had the, you know, it in the bag of tricks to go to it, you know, to go to what they did in the second half and deal with that. So does Spagnolo try to do something different? I mean, you know, I also think this is, I mean, this is also why the Ravens, not these teams don't scout each other, but this is why their buy is so big for the Ravens. Cause they were able to, able to advance scout all these teams more than the opponents. So I'm sure that they've, they have a little bit of an edge up in that. Um, now they have like every defensive staff member seemingly interviewing for a job, but um <laughs> They had, I'm sure, had a little bit of a leg up in terms of the game planning there. Um, I'm sure they're going to throw everything at him because the the way that the Chiefs win this game is they got to force a turnover or two, and the way to do that is just to to try to make a like one of those freakishly, you know, bad Lamar plays that can happen from time to time. And um, tip a I mean, I up. think I think they're going to go right, right back. The Ravens are going to go right back to what they did to start that second half. It's going to be quick passes. It's going to be slants. I think they're going to be getting trying to get Zay Flowers and Bateman, you know, working in the intermediate game and get them in space and let them make plays and, um, you know, drop a couple of things for likely. And God knows we haven't talked about it yet. But if Mark Andrews plays like just a whole nother ball game. So. I mean, it's, it's going to be fun, man. I think Zay has a big day on on. I feel Sunday. it too. I think I think he's due for like a breakout, like like or she like in like Rice did versus the um the Dolphins when he had the big kind of here's my coming out party. I think that's Zay this weekend. Yeah, I think it's um, I think they're going to have something in the bag, kind of similar to Lamar's. Hey, drop back left handed turn back and fire it down the right sideline like he did to Zay Flowers against Miami. Um, and we we really haven't seen the Ravens really like much in the Lamar era, like do anything tricky or anything like crazy out of the ordinary. And I don't know that this is the time or place to do it either, but um, but maybe, I don't know. Wild, wildcat with Gus Edwards, Lamar out wide. I almost wonder if they're like, why? I almost wonder if the philosophy there is like, we have this insane weapon that can do crazy things with every play. Why would we waste a right. play on on a trick play when we could just get that similar unstructured play yeah. in any? It was play. that left-handed thing was kind of kind yeah. of. They, they haven't done yeah. anything like what the Texans tried to with the double reverse 
pass. It's, like, do you know what the thing, the one thing we do is we do the Mark Andrews QB sneak. That or kind of well, favorite. the Prochet interception. Was that Prochet oh, a couple right. of years ago? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Year. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> James but, was, Lamar, Lamar, no, that was the game Lamar got hurt, right? Didn't he get hurt in that, that yeah. Broncos game? Yeah. yeah so it was. now it's kind of like an end of the bag, like, ah, shit, let's just just get it all out there but yeah again if, if you have the best player on the planet why take his hands uh, why take the ball out of his hands like the defense is probably yeah. like breathing a sound relief they're like thank god like <sighs> and the big the big injury to watch here is probably willie gay i don't know what his most recent update is but he's like the one backer who can spy lamar and has the speed to potentially keep up with him um he, he i guess he was he was limited in practice today. So um, that's just one to monitor as, as game day approaches. The other interesting angle for me here is I just love this potential Chiefs 49er stretch is like the two final bosses for Mike McDonald as the defensive coordinator this year. The best individual player and then the Shanahan scheme has become the, the offensive scheme of the moment. Um for him to be able to slay both those on the, en route to a Super Bowl and potentially in a head coaching job, although there's only two left. Um, and I don't know if any team's going to wait another two weeks if the Ravens make a Super Bowl to hire him, but um, I think they're safe. Now, for for him and this entire Ravens defense to be able to do the that. teams that are left are really not even teams that you really envision Mike McDonald going to like, I guess Seattle would be a fit like culturally, but I don't know that that's uh, DC is not grabbing his attention. They may talk about it all they want, but well, they I talked about, they, I think there was the early thought there. that there was a potential like package deal in terms of like front office and McDonald, you know, GM coach, but they've already hired the GM who's a 49ers guy. So you would think someone in that Shanahan, the, the dark horse is, is actually, on the other sideline on Sunday. I mean, if Andy Reid retires, eh, I would say there's probably 20% chance of that actually happening. But if it does, like the carousel is already closed for the most part and McDonald would be in theory still on the market, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I would think you would think KC would find, would go in the Reed tree though. If they got rid of Reed, you would think probably stay in the Reed. Oh, tree is, is McDonald in the Reed tree? Technically sort of. Sort of, yeah. They could, the they could call they, McDonald they the could Michigan. Call I they talked about that. Could they're gonna, they're gonna, I think they're back. gonna promote. They're gonna promote Sharon more. I think, but yeah. Someone, someone said, "What if Mike Vrabel goes to goes to Michigan?" <laughs> That'd be awesome. Can you imagine that? By the way, if if you're Mike Vrabel and you don't get a job this year, he should wait around and see what happens with Ryan Day. Because he could he could oh, yeah. waltz into the Ohio State job if that fails this year, because they will fire Ryan Day for sure. I, mean. mm-hmm. I don't I don't think he wants to recruit, but but I, he, that's, that's I don't think he would, I don't even think he would really necessarily need to with with how mm-hmm. it is now. You just have to with the war chest, you can go out and get players. So I mean, you still have to recruit, but at a place like Ohio State, I would think. I mean, I guess would I can't be say crazy this true, to just pull the trigger on that now. I don't know why DC. I don't know that, why, right? but what? But yeah, why, why would not? The commander should hire Brable. That he'd be, he'd be good. I, there, I, I, I said I thought he should have gone to. I thought the Cowboys would have been an awesome fit for him. I thought the Seahawks would have been a nice, like, you know, culture change kind of. But I also know. love that they had brought Bill think. Belichick down for two interviews and didn't hire him. Bill <laughs> Belichick should never coach. <laughs> why would you want Bill Belichick to coach your team right now? I, I, I would have thought there would have been an no. owner that would that an owner that would have said, "Okay, I can get the best, theoretically one of the best coaches of all time to coach my team." I, I'm shocked there has not been an owner that is not just rough shot at the front office and just be like, "This is what we're doing." You got what? You got you got three years before you have to go do this whole thing again. Like why? I, I that's what I don't understand. It's in the calculus. It's in the calculus. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it was like with the Terps and Patino. Like you really want to go get a guy who's. Who's what is Patino's in his what early 70s? Like I would think. I don't know that for sure, but that sounds right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I was not, I don't know why people want Belichick. This does not do it for me. Do you like, like the Titans hire? Oh, let's do a prediction for the game, then I'll ask you that question. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Ravens 27, Chiefs 17. 
RDT? Uh, 33 33-24 Ravens. I'm going to say 24-21. Mm. Well, ba- Banks, you're, you said it in the group chat the other day. Where you were like, I'm visualizing it. It's it's no, Justin Tucker. It's uh, Spenny said that, but I also said oh, that Spenny? the other night that I also have envisioned that. Um, yeah, he he hasn't so. had his moment in a while. Like he hasn't had a big moment. In, I know. In a little bit. I know. Him banging in that kick in those conditions against the Texans was pretty sensational, though. I know it was in the first quarter, but <laughs> that was not an easy stadium to kick in the other day, and he has not been mm-hmm. great from that distance this year. So that made me feel good. Maybe, maybe, maybe like they weren't releasing fully running Lamar the first part of the season. Maybe they told Justin to just like, hey, like take it easy. Yeah. Well, well I, I don't know if you guys, you guys are probably wrapped up, but somebody, it may have been Zarebeck or someone, was like, you know, Tucker's out here kicking before the game. He missed like three. You know, he missed. He made four and he missed two and like one. You know, his two were short and then he like punted a ball because he was mad and then he came out and he kicked one more and he nailed it. But they were like, it's it's gonna be tough out there and they were like, Tucker does not look like happy with the weather comfortable or anything like that so like you said him him banging that one early is probably like all right i'm yeah i'm good now we we got it so where did you in the in your seats brian where did you net out on how cold it ended up getting like how did you guys feel up there i mean i i was i was pretty warm i was pretty good (laughs) i packed i packed on like two thick oh oh there's old school stuff right here. Boy. Oh, yeah. boy. Oh, he's back. Um, You're back. back. You're back. Um, I right, two short sleeve tight ones, two turtleneck long sleeves, uh, like warm weather ones, um, a hoodie and a jacket. I'm trying to think if there was anything more in there. But that was, that had to be pretty warm. Obviously, the helmet did a great job. Did you go hand Shout warmers? Out. Did you go hand Shout warmers? Out to the lid. Uh, no, I had some, uh, some good thick, um, gloves like some like fuzzy like you know the deer skin like yeah i had like uh i went like under under armor cold gear long sleeve shirt sweatshirt sweatshirt jacket big jacket and felt felt good now behind us this father brought his two kids and did not dress them anywhere near appropriately enough just terrible like were were, the kids miserable oh my god like i was looking behind me and they were like in the seat like like completely like oh my god it was like i felt so terrible for them because not just that they were cold and and miserable but it was like this is such an amazing opportunity for these kids to be at a great place and make some memories and they're just gonna remember being cold as shit yeah were they just in like jeans and like a sweatshirt like oh and i went i went two pairs of sweatpants though yeah, I didn't even. Yeah, I had um, two l- pairs of long johns and uh, my camo joggers. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's terrible. Uh, you just because uh, the thing is, just pat, just be as warm as you can, and then if you want to rip off layers, rip off layers. Hondo P. Hondo mm-hmm. P. Um, always take them off. You can always take them off. So, RDT, you're 30 seconds on the Titans hire, and then we'll move on to any assorted Orioles topics really quickly. Big Tom Callahan's son. Like, sure. That's all I got. That's, I, <laughs> that I haven't paid, like, any seconds. attention. I'm, Who did you want? I wanted McDonald. Like, that's that's the guy I wanted. <laughs> like, yeah, I think I, I said it. it in the group chat. I was like, give me that guy. Like, he's fucking awesome. Like, yeah, I want him. And I quickly realized, like, they're not going to get him, but – whatever i'm no the, 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 my my titans fandom is is taking a hardcore backseat it's gonna be no henry like just a full rebuild no Vrabel. i'm like oh, i'm obviously they're so nice fan, to you they send you the influencer boxes and everything they're so nice to you i'm i'm wearing the oilers sweatshirt yeah like, that's a great shirt great stuff. jojo thinks it's an a she's always like oh you're wearing your a <laughs> <laughs> show some goddamn respect around her, okay that's cool so, you know but no, I, I it doesn't matter to me. I'm I'm fully on the Orioles. <laughs> we're just, we're uh, with that Orioles. with that said, do you want to break down the uh, huge Tyler Nevin deal? Welcome back, baby. Cash considerations. <laughs> Thanks again for all your uh, your efforts. I'm sure we'll see you again. And uh, yeah, welcome back. And then they signed some minor leaguer yesterday who was a first baseman, and now he's a left-handed pitcher. So 
Sure. I guess that's what we're doing. So. Sure. <laughs> really, the bigger yeah. Orioles stories no. are coming from Jim Palmer right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, which there's a couple of them with Palmer. I know. That's um, what I'm saying. He has a new thing every week. I know, I know, but no, I was, I was at the, uh, I, I went to the uh, caravan event this morning. I was not there at five thirty. I dropped off Joe at daycare and stopped by the Banditos in Columbia. Really awesome. It's right next to. I mean, do they have these in Baltimore yet? The barcades? Like, I'm sure there's a couple of them, but yeah, in Columbia, there's a, there's a couple. One is popping up. One is just opening like Friday, and it's right next to the Banditos. But uh, saw Grayson a little bit. He was there. Saw hi to Elias. Um, Elias said some comments about how they're more likely to make, you know, acquire a starting pitcher through a trade rather than free agency. And now everyone's kind of just in that same, like, all right, well, we've heard this now for two and a half years. So, or a year and a half, and a half years, whatever. So, you know, I think everyone wants another pitcher and maybe another bat. And, you know, again, I, pretty soon we'll be, we'll be talking spring training after the Ravens wrap up their season and we'll go from there, but they still, still moves to be made. So. Got to make them now. Yeah, it feels like they. It feels like they still need to go get a pitcher of some some ilk and at some point. It feels the, like that has to happen. Yeah, and I don't know if it's going to be Cease. And the thing about Cease and like everyone's mad at Elias for not trading Norby and Ortiz and Kowser and blah 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 and Mayo for him. It's also like, listen, nobody else has traded for him. Like if if they, the the Cardinals have traded for him and they traded their number eleven prospect and fifteen prospect. Then it would be like, yeah, what the fuck? But it's also like, listen, nobody has traded for D- Dylan Cease yet. So either – I think the White Sox really are just asking for, like, Ortiz, Kowser, Kerstad, Grayson, Mountcastle. You know, something crazy like that where it's like, no, that's that's stupid. So I don't know. Again, I, I am very excited for baseball. Obviously, the town is still – is is reveling – reveling? But reveling? In the, uh, in the, the, the Ravens aura, so – Again, a bunch of caravans going on. That's the word of the week is caravan. There's a Ravens caravans. There's Orioles caravans. There's everything. So anywhere you go this weekend is going to be a caravan of some sort. So I'll be at Guinness tomorrow before the uh, before going to Jimmy's to have some soup with Brian probably. Mm. I know. Yeah, and I know the, the, the Orioles season obviously didn't end the way everyone would have wanted in the playoffs. But like what a year for Baltimore sports. I know we said this like in October as the – Ravens were clearly good and the Orioles were doing what they were doing. But I mean, it's about, about as good as you can ask for. I mean, you would have loved their Orioles postseason run, but this has been incredibly fun. I'm the sure. Reveling, I'm sure you're reveling saw, constantly. There's just constant reveling going on every week. I'm sure you guys saw the tweets last week being like, oh, a top seeded uh, Baltimore team who is well rested facing off against a team from Texas. Like, what could go wrong? And everyone was like, let's hope we don't have a repeat. And obviously they didn't, but yeah, mm-hmm. there were some fun similarities, but again, yeah, I mean, we we've talked about it for a while. Like it is a great time to be in Baltimore. And again, the city is, is just bumping it. Like you said, you can feel it. Like you can legitimately feel the buzz. And with every fucking announcement from Jimmy's being like, Oh, by the way, Ed Reed is going to be there. Oh, by the way, the guys from all time low are going to be at the tail go and Carmelo Anthony and Rudy Gay and Ed Reed and Ray Lewis and Shaq. It's just like, it's it's a it's a different it's this it's, it's different time right now. There's obviously the NFC Championship game with Detroit and and San Francisco, but this feels like the center of the sports world this week. It does well, and yeah. again, yeah, I wanted to t- talk about that too. It's all about the quarterbacks. I mean, golf versus Purdy is maybe the least sexy playoff like quarterback matchup you can get. No offense to them, but like, yeah, I mean, if if the Lions aren't in that game. In terms of the Lions storyline, that game is a very boring game. For, I think yeah, from like, like an intrigue perspective. Yeah, the Fox would have been. <sighs> yeah, like, yeah, I mean, that if it's the, yeah, that was... and golf, then it's okay. Sure, two number one picks, blah blah blah. But th- I mean, this is this is the pinnacle. This is this is Brady Mahomes, or it's Brady Manning. Like that's what it is. It's it's the two top dogs. I think in the I I put Lamar above Josh Allen. Like you know, I I, I don't know why, but I just do. I I think Lamar is more poor polarizing i think he's just a better player and i think he's a bigger draw in the nfl right now especially with this matchup you know first first mahomes so people have been itched this is like people itched for Co- all they wanted was kobe lebron in the finals and and you know to meet up in a big game and it never happened we never got them in the finals like this is that like superstar legitimate like 
groundbreaking matchup, I think. So it's 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 a good time to, to it's a, it's to a Madden cover game. game. It's a Madden cover game. Yeah, the thing too is like hmm, it's a revolving door to a degree of, of Mahomes versus Blank. And Lamar hasn't really had a crack at him in the playoffs, and this is his first crack. So it's it's a real opportunity to to write the story and own the story and control the narrative and all those good things. Because Burrow kind of has a decent claim on him. Obviously, Allen just get, is owned by Mahomes. but Regular season, um, he's fine. Playoffs, he yeah. can't do anything. Right. So um, this is Lamar's opportunity to, to write the first chapter, and then ideally – Ideally, there's more chapters to be written. So, Natasha Bedingfield be... said it best, right? Mm. Mm. Finish it, Taylor. The rest is still unwritten. <laughs> I'm shocked we've gone this long without like mentioning Taylor Swift coming to Baltimore either. I kind of brought. I, I'm, I'm very earlier, proud of you guys. Briefly, yeah. do you have I, like no, a wait, statement on like? Taylor. I I don't know. I don't know what statement there is to be made, but I feel like. Talk, talk us through things, Taylor. About the Taylor Swift situation? Yes. I mean, how do you, what, what are your, yeah, I mean, I think, are there I any mean, allegiances I think is, like, no, it's funny. RDT, your, your dear sister um, texted me about this and asked how we should feel as Taylor Swift fans about the Ravens and Taylor Swift. And my answer was, I mean, she's, she's not our friend this week. Love Taylor Swift. Hope she has a great time. Hope she has a great time in the city. But she's got to be ready to take that L. I mean, that's just kind of how it goes. City. Yeah, she's going you know, to when she, like in the I city. Know. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. When she when she flies the PJ in at about one o'clock or about eleven thirty, yeah. um, into what BWI and takes the twenty minute drive and gets escorted. Her t- you know her time her time in the city. She she's okay. going to be in the air, and I'm still going to be in the stadium watching the presentation. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's totally not – it's not totally confirmed that she's coming, right? But you would think she's, she's oh, going to be there. Oh, she has to be coming. She goes out on tour in a week and a half. She goes back on tour. Well, what's the private jet? I mean, what's that? It's it's less than an hour, right, on a private jet? From, from where? Here? From New York to Baltimore? Um, It's probably, yeah. I assume. About an hour. Maybe less. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe less. She if she's like, in New York, she has – she has, she has, yeah. she has Various places. She's, I think she has places in she New York, LA, that. and Nashville. So she could be anywhere. I'm, but I um, assume she's in New York. But I, no, I, don't know, I mean, but. yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, it's, it's weird. It's weird to be in the, the team that all of America is rooting for because they would like Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, and Taylor Swift to lose. That's an interesting spot to be in. Yeah. As a big Taylor Swift person. That's but. just good. Just the most unpredictable storyline that could have ever existed. Like they could the have ever happened. Country is is on the side of the big bad Ravens. Um, yeah, yeah, and also because, Lamar, because who has never been like I feel like has never been like the national favorite, except for maybe a little bit in 2019. Like now, Lamar is just like our conquering hero. Like people are putting out those edits and be like, "Save us!" Very funny. <laughs> the one, Very the funny. one I'm, with I'm, the end. I'm out on I'm out on these like weird ai photos of taylor swift like i, I don't know that stuff is bizarre i'm, I'm really <laughs> very like weird. like big cat put out the one of her like kissing andy reed like i'm out of that out of that stuff like that stuff's weird that stuff's really now, weird i don't know why yeah, that. my so my my boss actually big bills fan went to the game up in buffalo last week and apparently there were during commercial breaks and things like that they're going out of their way to play songs um by taylor's exes um in the stadium which I guess was a big hit. I'm, but they never showed her on the jumbotron. I'm curious if the Ravens have the balls to show Taylor up on the screen and let all of, all of Baltimore just boo her ass off. So, that would be like so, such a so moment, that, like, wouldn't it? That's so. My question: Are you? Would you guys be fine with the say the Ravens win this game and Taylor goes in like a tailspin? Like Kelsey is awful. He's terrible. They break up and he goes into this tailspin and is never the same. Her music is never ever close to the same. It's like Little Wayne after he went to jail. And it's just like this what is, is this? done. This is just this a, is the, the most preposterous thing I've ever heard. Like you're, yeah. you're but, suggesting say, that she's gonna lose her fastball. <laughs> He's already gotten like she already got, you know, publicly destroyed by Kanye West, who everybody sided with. I hope everybody remembers who's when they sided with Kanye West against Taylor Swift. All of you, I, all those people, probably, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. 
All, How do you not bring Kanye out? Just remember who you were back in the day when you're like, oh, I hate Taylor Swift, Kanye West. This is so great. Nice job. Nice job. He's a real good guy. What a joke. If you're the Raven. Um, no, I mean, she's not going to go to a tailspin. She's not going to go to a tailspin. And when she goes to do a tailspin, every no. time we get great music out of it. Every single no, time. No, what, what if this is different? Like, what if this is the the straw that breaks the camel's back? You're guaranteeing me this win, or you're guaranteeing me a Super Bowl here? A Super Bowl, and her music is never the same. She's never the same again. I mean, I don't really know how to answer this question. We're talking like she goes on like a Britney Spears type like run, where like it's 11:30 and she's on oh, Instagram like I hate, doing I hate, bizarre I shit, this. and I you're like, oh, I, feel I might bad. have to kick you off the show. I'm just asking. Uh, We're just guys asking questions on a Thursday. I'm taking a soupy every day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I mean, that's the right end. I think the catalog is speaks for the itself. catalog. Is so can much, and we can live with the catalog. Yeah, you can. If she's if she that's retired tomorrow and said I'm not making another drop of music, she has enough amazing music to listen to for for the rest of my life. It's an amazing situation. That's that's I wanted that I I just wanted to clear the air there just playing uh, hypotheticals. But yeah, it's gonna be she wild. Cries if she's in the building. It's gonna be wild if she's in the building. She's gonna be in the building. It's gonna happen. Yeah. I hope we yeah. boo the shit out of her. That'd be so funny. <laughs> and by the, can I say, I will applaud if they show her on the screen. No I doubt about it. Will. I will applaud. I will applaud. I will cheer. Just like I did for my guy Booney when he got a new Yeah, I will applaud. Jeez, Jeez. did you just compare Taylor Swift to Booney? <laughs> <laughs> that's you know, insane. Thing is, like that's that's insane. The bank got passed over for for the Eras tour. As always, it did. Over. Fact, it's gotten passed over, got passed over for which it should. But it's got her for every tour, but but the Ares tour, it felt like it had a chance because she dropped FedEx and I was like, well, why would you not just do? But she just didn't go to as many places. That's part of it. So. But then got passed over again because she just added new U.S. dates in a variety she of cities. That she Indianapolis, moved. like, yeah, yeah, it's tough. But there were last week there were people like, is she going to go? Never gone to Buffalo on tour. It's like, yeah, she's going to go to Buffalo. Like, what does she? What does she care? The fuck is going to get Buffalo, in New York? Like, <laughs> oh man um so yeah i mean it's an interesting it's definitely an interesting angle um i want to know what suite it's going to be i want to know where we're supposed to be looking i for. know yeah i think about that too and like i how many suites do you think they hold for the opposing team you got to think there's an owner suite for the opposing team every week it's multiple suites is it one suite four or five maybe, maybe would bashadi have the balls to deny is that no. a Bashadi? I don't know if that's a Bashadi no, move. These guys get it. Brittany Mahomes gets into a suite every week. So before Taylor Swift. Oh, was oh, that's that's interesting. I think Jackson Mahomes was like on an end zone suite. If I yeah, picture they showed that, that on. Oh I think yeah, they showed that on mostly sports to the yeah. Oh, no, no, from from my to Jackson. the left to the it's on the Russell Street side of the stadium. I I, I feel like that's where he was. She's gonna cry if they lose, and you guys, that's something that this, I'll have to. I mean, into. this might be it for Kelsey. Like, you think that's it is? a that's a serious, you know, head on a pike. I know Jake's Jake's girl Michelle Tafoya was talking about it, so I don't. He's clearly he's he's thirty four. He clearly wants to do other things. There's the no doubt is, about that. Cliff has arrived. And he's a tight end. He's got maybe words, what? But... He's got probably maybe like one or two more pro like productive, productive years until he goes into like the Zach Ertz phase of his career, where he's just kind of like jumping around, signing, and like signing the week before the conference yeah, championship to try and win a ring. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he would. Be, I think he would be smart to hang it up. He's never going to be this. He's never going to have the ability to do more of what he wants outside of football than right now. It's his, his stock is never going to be higher than right now. If if. I don't know if he'll retire if they don't win the Super Bowl because then I think the rumor then then the talking point will be oh well he's just with Taylor and that's why he's going to retire because he's he met his girlfriend and like now he's going to retire and I feel like he'll be like no nah, that that's not how he wants his book to end I don't know that's I don't know that's just me yeah but he's got two of them though so it's like God, he's still I say I say he's he had a I mean he still had ninety three for nine eighty four and five tutties. I'm gonna say I know he was a really good he year. Was gonna play yeah, maybe that he goes game. one or two. Maybe he goes one or two but, more. But man, like yeah. he's got the full he's got the media machine now fully going though. Like 
the brother had said like Jason retires. They both retire. They go full in on that podcast. They're both going on TV. They're, they do. You know, he probably goes they to the do like a do like a Peacock Manning cast, you know, like I, something like 100, that. Like 100%. 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's no doubt on the table for those guys when they want it's it. Probably, yeah. I, it could yeah. be like NBC that that runs that in some yeah. way. Like just like Peacock, like a stand. Yeah. yeah, like a simulcast. Good. Or they Amazon. alternate because the the Mannings don't do every week. Yeah, Amazon. Amazon do it on Thursday night football. You probably get a little more leeway because it's a streaming service, and you can say a little more. I don't know. Um, all right, let's do Nick Cannon Medley, Maryland person of the week. I feel like it's been maybe six months since we've done this. Feels like a long time. <laughs> um, I'll actually start. Um, the night before the Ravens game is one of the great events of the year. It's the Royal Rumble. Um, which I think if you're a non wrestling fan is the one that's the easiest get into to get into, both because you can, you know, do Royal Rumble pools and things like that, but also because it's just so easy to watch and just watch people get thrown over the top rope. I don't think that's like boring for anybody. And WWE's never as this is the hottest WWE WWE has been in a long time. So uh, I'm very excited for it. It should be it should be very fun. Men's and women's uh, a fatal four way match for Roman Reigns's universal title should be a good night. Tampa Bay hosted at the Trop, one of your favorite venues RDT hosting. Oh, that's Maryland. where it is. Yeah, it's at the Trop. They, oh. they put it in baseball stadiums recently. It's been in Houston. It's been in – actually, um, where was it last year? It was a baseball stadium. They've gone to like – Don't do that. They've thing. gone to WrestleMania football stadiums, SummerSlam and football stadiums. That was in Nashville a couple of years ago, Vegas last year, and Royal Rumbles in baseball stadiums. So oh. it feels like kind of what they do. I Well, it's not going to happen, but a Royal Rumble in Baltimore? I don't know oh. what was written into the lease, but – that would be it's probably just always going to be too cold, but I could see yeah. them. I, maybe MT Bank doesn't move the needle. It's not a big enough market, but like a SummerSlam in Baltimore would be sweet at MT. It's probably never hosting a WrestleMania, although Philly's about to host one in three months, and this is farther mm-hmm. south. So, um, hmm. but yeah, couldn't be more excited for the Royal Rumble. Wrestling's fun right now, and about to get five Billy from Netflix, which is crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. That was that's a crazy move. That's a great yeah. move for them. Yeah. Tough, tough money. day for uh, for old uh, scumbag Vince, though. That one. <laughs> oh yeah, well, uh, that is the <laughs> thing. Company hot guy, the founder of the company. <laughs> Not Least surprising stuff. thing of all time, though. Least surprising thing. I like, mean, <laughs> yeah, that was those stories are not good. And the pictures they <laughs> our, used. Good, our good that friend, that friend of the show, Pat Dugan, texted me and just said, "Vince McMahon, comma, whoops." <laughs> I said that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> <laughs> Tough, tough, tough. Uh, RDT, what do you got? Uh, we're we're gonna go going back to the old well here. I think he's my most used, but Mo Gab is 18th birthday tomorrow on Friday. Someone was pointing out, like, oh, you know, it's Purple Friday. Thanks, West for that. That's a great move by him. That uh, Purple Friday uh, stuff that he did last week. But uh, yeah, no, Mo, Mo is 18th birthday, so we're doing dinner with Jeremy and his mom and uh, a couple people at Jimmy's. So. Uh, yeah, again, it's crazy that he would have been 18 tomorrow. We got, I got a putting a video together. Of some people's wishing him some happy birthdays. So, uh, as I just get one from uh, from some more friends, so I we got him coming in. It's gonna be a good video. I'll post him on Twitter and all that. But yeah, just a happy early 18th birthday to uh, everyone's favorite Mo Gabba. So again, you know what someone else pointed out? They said it's gonna be the. They said it's gonna be a Mo Super Bowl, and they said Baltimore and Motown. And I was like, oh. Like that could be, that could be something. So God, look, look out for that. Thinking of things that is so good. I'm, it would have taken me years to think that. That, that like, I don't know. Nobody good. watches. You know what? The pro actually, football. I think the Lions win that game. I think I actually think they, they do. Could. I they think could. they're going to win the, that um, game. Nick on the pro football football show last week talking about the the Lions and Bucks game. Thanks. I don't know if you saw the quote. And he said, Campbell Bowl or Bowls and Campbell. And he's like, it's the Super Bowl. Like, of course, this is. That would have taken me years. Todd Bowles and Dan Campbell. He was like, we're talking Bowls of the, Campbell. The one that's going around with the Super Bowl mm. logo colors and the teams has is kind of crazy. Yeah. Like how the yeah. teams have matched up with the colors. That's kind of wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's wild. That's, that's wild. Man. Yeah. It's wild. It's wild. Banks. 
I'm taking the bank. It's just the bank. It's just, it was a great time on Saturday. Um, you're right that there was a little bit of angst there at halftime, but the energy was so good, I think, from beginning to end, and then especially the second half when the game was so clearly in hand. Um, man, they just brought the juice, and I'm so excited to see it on Sunday. Just so freaking excited, man. Like, I, I, there are not enough hours in the day on Sunday. Like, I just want the tailgate to last forever. And I want to be able to go in and take my time going into the stadium and be there early enough and enjoy the environment in the stadium at the same time. And you just, you just, there's just not going to be enough time to do all the things I want to do on Sunday to just drink in the environment and enjoy it. So um, I just, man, I just can't stop thinking about it. Can't stop thinking about the bank. I think you are not alone in the obsessive thinking about that. I think that's every, Every Ravens fan right now, whether they're going to be in the stadium or outside the stadium, wherever you're going to watch at a bar, back at home, your your man cave, your your place that you watch, like this is this is as epic as it can get for a football fan. The chance it's, to get to the Super Bowl in your home your home building it's pretty crazy. It's gonna be it's gonna be a religious experience. And I was yeah. talking, I was actually talking with um, Jake and Spenny about this at the tailgate when people are just having a great time under the bridge, stand on top of snow piles and just shotgun yeah. beers and stuff. I was just thinking about like the tailgate tailgating in general is like the most communal and pure place on planet earth. It's like, here are these people that have just joined because they have this mutual interest and it's like a festival. Like you're going to it, you know, it's like, you're just around similar minded people. You're going to talk about the game. You're going to drink some beers. You're just going to eat some food. And it's just, everyone is just happy. It's, it's just such a pure experience tailgating in general. And um, God, it just ties into the entire experience on Sunday. I just can't freaking wait. There's not many bad awesome. vibes at tailgates. It's impossible to have bad vibes at tailgates. RDT, where are you watching this game? Probably just at home. I don't, I don't, again, like I had friends who were like, Oh, you go to the tailgate. And I was like, no, like, it's not my like thing to to revel like I'm using the word again to revel in. It's not my like it's not my experience. Like I I had friends who weren't Ravens fans who went who like took off work or went to the parade in in 2012, and I'm like why why would you do that? Like it's not yeah. I, I I'm like if I want I want to go to an experience a game like that I want it to be my team. And again it's like no no I I'm I'm fully hope you guys have a great time and all that. I'm just like I would feel like this isn't my place to be. Yeah, you'd be I, like I, a little I, fraudulent. I grew up yeah, in Montgomery well, County. I wasn't like, going to go. I wasn't going to go to a Redskins conference championship game or a tailgate. No, game. and that's I did go to. Exactly I did go to a right. Nationals World Series game, but that's because I'm a huge Astros guy. That is true. <laughs> yeah, people people forget that. People forget. Yeah, but no, I, yeah, I'll I'll watch it at home, and and I'll again, I'll just I'll watch it. Like I've said like I don't hate. I absolutely hate the Ravens. Like more than anything. And now they're just like, I, they're just another team. Like I, I don't root for them to win. I don't pull for them to lose. I need money on them. So I'm like, but yeah, sure. <laughs> Keep it going. I don't care. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. It's that's, it's, that's RDT. That's why you're a good vibes guy. That's why you're just a good gross. vibes guy. And it's you'll get gross, rewarded with so. a great Orioles season. Yeah. You don't have to ask why I'm on the podcast anymore since I'm not a Ravens <laughs> fan. <laughs> Yeah, we had to add two other Ravens people to the show so we could combat the <laughs> hatred for you on it. We had to fully, yeah, just fully just eradicate you, fully eradicate you from the instant analysis. Just to cancel me out, where I've been like the most openly like pro Ravens person. Being I, like, think yeah, I think they're, they're going to win. I think, I think you have to potentially come on the instant analysis Sunday with this big of a game. I think yeah. we have to pull both the instant analysis this week. I'd come on. I I I I sit there and watch them all. I was in the I was clipping away <laughs> the screenshots for the milk. Yeah. Did Spenny, is he a, doing anything if they went? Oh, he said harbor. He oh, said harbor. I, 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 hey, I don't know when from someone who's been there, I've I've called harbor so and I've dodged it, it many the, the times. Best. Spenny is such a savage. He's like putting in our group chat, like, hey, you know, is there just a specific place I can't go? They they can't be that bad in all of the place. He's just trying to figure it out. It's so good. He's so good. He's like, I've reached out to the city comptroller to find <laughs> yeah. out if there's like an area. Like, like no, nah, man, I think you just go. I, I think you just, you don't plan. Yeah, to- no, I think, I, you, I think you go right in front of the science center. Yeah. yeah you know, like, that's literally he's like, should I put a wetsuit on? on? You know, that video that's always just been on Twitter where it's the, the two kids just dancing and they're, they're 
I don't, I can't explain this video well, but they're dancing in a city. They're up in like on high levels. They're jumping in the yes, yes. and dance and shit. And then the one kid just mm -hmm. runs out in the water and just falls in. Like that's what he needs to do at the corner of the inner Harbor by the Maryland science center. Just, just run I, right I out. I think that's, he can't wait. He has to do it. After, he has to run from the bank to the Harbor and just do it. You just have to do it. Like you just do it. There will be a, you'll get a pass. Everyone will be going nuts. People will be like, oh, this is so funny. If he's like, oh, I'm doing Thursday, January 29th, people are going to be like, no, 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 no. Just, he has to just do it. I, I'll, I'm, I'm going to vet him, this out for him. I'm going to allow me to, to audit his, his whole promises made, promises delivered. Well, we need him to not he hurt about it. We need him on our show. So he needs to not hurt well, himself. Again, as someone who has, threatened this multiple times i think you just got to do it you just you can't think about it you get it's the franchise it is a trooper like she'll she'll film it and broadcast it she'll by the it. way the, i mean shout out to the franchise who just sat in there and watched <laughs> him do that on live on the show good for her a, a, a true and then, and then, rider by way, and then by the way banks i don't know if you're you were coherent enough to watch this go was just she was clearly getting frustrated that jake and spenny weren't doing a good job like passing the mic back and forth and so she just was taking it and just switching back and forth <laughs> it was awesome it's jake was just we like, need to have her on the instant analysis sure she i mean she was on the, she was on this one she can come on yeah, many times. Yeah. yeah we love the franchise um, we do Awesome show, guys. Cannot wait for this weekend. Uh, make sure to go listen to the Jumbo set. Spenny, Jake, I believe they had Cole Jackson on the show uh, recapping the divisional rounds. I'm sure that was fantastic ball talk from those three guys. Um, that's about as good as you'll get. Uh, and a Ravens focus show. And then they also today recorded a preview show on their side of things. So an OG3 preview, a uh, old school Baltimore beatdown preview from those guys um, gives you your full hours of Ravens coverage from this podcast. And then as per usual, we'll be on um, on Sunday for the instant analysis, hopefully in great spirits, hopefully not in bad spirits. That will be a tough instant analysis if it goes the other way, but we're manifesting good things um, for the Ravens. So yeah. any last words, fellas to see you at the tailgoat, see you at the bank, see you at the fast pass event. If you're going to that tomorrow, <sighs> shout out, Jimmy. Are you doing great time with what's up? Are you doing the, the – do you see the spicy cream of crab? Are we doing that tomorrow? Ooh, so that's going to be at the tailgoat. Um, I may have to – I need a review. I, I need a review then. No, no, no. Do it at the tailgoat. Yeah. Give me a review. Yeah. Tweet, tweet out the review. I, I'll do that. I'm happy to do that. Okay. I'll start with that, that, to be honest. Like, I feel like that'll be a nice that's warm thing to just get going. Yeah. PFD always says the soup fills all the cracks and it's good as a dessert. But I feel like that's, that's a, a good, good eighth layer to get though but yeah man it does that type of soup if it's on a creamier side can fill it quick and it also yeah. you, you can pay for it later yes and again the, the you don't want to be in a porta potty with Shaq, ed reed and, and ray lewis up there on 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 stage and you're, you're well, yeah, well we'll we'll talk about that later <laughs> we yeah we will be the, the the tailgoat will be in full effect i've now secured my spot at the tailgoat 20 minutes before the show so <laughs> <laughs> I've jumped onto the to the banks to the banks crew at both the tailgate and the game. So can't wait to see everybody out there. We will see you after the show for the instant analysis. Make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, follow us on all all of us on social media at X Fifty Two Podcast at E D I T T I Twenty Two at Barstool Banks at Jake Luke at Ravens for Dummies. You can follow me at Taylor Smith Ten. Go Ravens! What a weekend coming here in Baltimore. We will see you next time on the Exit 52 podcast presented by Jimmy's Seafood.